Frankie here. Today I am joined by Bowsy, Rock Force, Monster Energy. We're here to talk about experience and knowledge on breaking. Bowsy, thank you so much for joining me today. I've been a big fan for a while. I'm a big fan of this too. I see all the work you've been putting in and it's been showing a lot, you know, so it's an honor to be on this interview. That's a huge compliment. Can you just start by sharing a little bit of your rough timeline for not just breaking, but also life? Mexico, Colorado. Let's talk about Bud Time Monsters a little bit. Freak show. Now we're in Vegas. Well, I want to say that's, again, that's crazy that I went back and brought all this information because <laughs> I feel like a lot of people don't know this about me. I'm obviously an immigrant. I was born in Mexico. I was brought to Colorado when I was about one. My whole life I grew up in Colorado. I recently just moved out of Colorado and I'm in Vegas, which is really, really fun. I'm out there with my crew and it's something different, you know? Growing up was tough, right? We never really were the rich type of family, right? My parents are hustlers still to this day. For me, I always saw the positive things in everything. For me, that's a superpower because a lot of people can let themselves go when you go through rough times, right? I think my life was a little harder, but I'm happy it was that hard because personally it got me closer to God and it also just showed me how hard I should work to get things, even if I had to work harder than others. And for me, I think that was a huge blessing because I feel like people don't get to that level unless you're struggling. So I look at struggles as a blessing in my eyes. I live in Colorado, I recently just moved, and yeah, now I'm in Vegas. I've been in Vegas for four months, going on five, and I'm enjoying it, I love it out there. A couple things I want to point out there. The first thing you're talking about is having the hardship and being grateful for them. This channel, while we talk about breakers and breaking and competing, until the end of time, it's like at a certain point, we start extracting these life lessons. I think it's dope what you're doing because breaking needs more fans. And in order to create that, you need to do what you're doing right now, which is not just doing these interviews, but you're going deep in and like asking real questions. And I feel like that's what's going to make people, you know, more attracted to, oh, like, what's, what was his life like? And the fact that you're doing this, like, I think you could be that person to bring those new fans into breaking, which will be huge. It, it won't be a small impact. That's that's probably the impact we need right now to like make Michael Jordan in this, in this breaking, make the all these. All these people have fans because they wanted to know how their life was. And I feel like that's what breakers don't have right now. You're going into people's lives and like really digging in there and like bringing all that out that people don't know. And I think that's, that's very, a beautiful thing for sure. Capturing the big picture. You know, people like Michael Jordan, they've captured the hearts of non-basketball players. And then the second thing you're talking about, Vegas, this move from Colorado to Vegas. Can you give us a little bit of background on this? Colorado. Colorado actually has a lot of history. Lords of Finesse, they were one of the OG crews back in the 80s. GWT, Amita, Street Styles, like a lot of OG crews, which I feel like right now are not as involved anymore as before. They, I think, help shape the scene, as well as Bedtime Monsters, my old crew. We were actually called past our bedtime because we were all really, really young kids. We were all so young, and the Colorado scene then was young, but it was old too. People seeing like the young guys come up and like, you know, us training really hard, I think that changed the scene a lot, which is now a much younger scene. It's not so active with like, you know, OG. There's a lot of people coming out of there. Two people that have made it, no, three people that have made it international. I can cross Angel. He's actually not breaking as much anymore, but he was next level of his powerless. And Run, Run comes from Power Up too, he's in Renegades. I'm excited to see where the scene goes because it's so young and it's growing. Anyone with two eyes that's paying attention to these younger bows, Colorado kids are all over the place. They came out to Ohio last year, mm -hmm. rolled them deep. All this breaking for gold stuff, all these kids from Colorado. There's one kid, his name is Jay Swipes. It's Taino, another one is Callan. Callan actually won a couple breaking for gold. And then there's another girl, her name is Evelyn. She's really crazy too. Do you have any observations about the quality of their instruction or mentorship? I think there's a lot of studios in Colorado. I've been in the studio in Colorado Springs, the Boy Factory in Denver, the School of Breaking, you know, and then there's a studio called Reach Out. It's not new, but they changed their name, and they're in Boulder. Also, Spot 2.0, there's five studios in a small scene. So, I think there's a lot to learn from every person in every studio and every location. 
So I think that's why these kids are getting better. And they're also like all training together. They're not like there's not so much beef in a way as back then. But like you could only train with people. You can't go train with those people. And now in Colorado, the scene is so much smaller that people would like to train with each other. And I think that's what builds up things. You know, it's like there's not so much. Beef. There's more like sharing. Like you know, let's share, let's train together. So that's one thing I do like about Colorado. But I also like the rawness of like having beef too. You know, so it pushes you. But you know, there's a balance. Uh, but I, I do feel like Colorado has a lot of like good energy towards everyone. So I think that might be it. That's why a lot of kids are flourishing. So a little bit about Vegas now. For me, in my eyes, Vegas is the scene right now. Like that is where it's at because. Not only coming from alchemy, like I teach at alchemy, these kids in, in the advanced class, like, these are the kids winning everything right now in the nation, right? Besides like uh, kid break and like, you know other kids in, in the East Coast, but yeah, these kids that I'm teaching like Bobby, Rose, uh, Demise, Logan, like all these kids are killing it right now. And they made a little crew clock show for me, so like these kids are killing it, and they're, a lot of them are mainly from Vegas. Um, and then on top of that, you got. OGs and the active people there, like you got Ali there, you got, you know, all of them are Ben Stacks, all these people, Ronnie, you know, and then you got the new generation, but then you also have Aquas. When I go to practice, like, I see all these people and I'm just like, yo, I just want to go harder, you know, because when you're around people that are active and that are good, I think that pushes you also. So I feel like that's one thing I, I will say, Denver is like, there's not as much people trying to travel and like, be on that level, but in Vegas, everyone's trying to be so at this point, we're going to give you a chance to react to some old footage, starting with Bedtime Monsters. Yo, this is so old. Yo, I'm, I'm actually shocked you found this. Not with the skinny jeans. <laughs> Damn. I think this is when I first we did our first real crew battle as Bedtime Monsters. <laughs> I'm crazy for this, but I can't believe you this. <laughs> I was a kid trying to find himself. I was around people who had a goal, and I think I was finding out who I was through them. I was a freshman or sophomore, one of those. This in Colorado used to be like, if you made it, into, this was called Dragon Ball. If you made it into Dragon Ball, like, they only had expo battles. So if you made it in there, like, you were killing it. This was the first time I really experienced, like, a crew vibe, like, being with the crew. I feel like back then, having a crew was your identity, too, you know? It's like who you were with, who you were growing up with. Back then, it was individuality still, but with your crew. So it was like a different way of building. And I think that way of building definitely brings out a whole other person. Rather than just building by yourself with other people that you don't really like, you just train with, you know? I do miss those days and I think that's why I I went towards rock for more because I needed that. That's what I was missing. I was a freak show and when I was a freak show obviously they had a lot of members but a lot of the members weren't active anymore. The two main members which was Geo and Boogie Man they became really, really successful as just fighters. Like, they're top in the game right now. Which, you know, that's really dope for them. And as for me joining them with crew, like, there was only like three of us, you know? So, I, I never really had the crew aspect on that. And I think that's what I was missing. Not to knock about Free Show because if it wasn't for Free Show, I wouldn't be here either. They taught me a lot, mentality wise, like, move wise. I'm very thankful that they were in my life because I wouldn't be where I'm at. Freak Show, I joined it fairly later. I was probably around like seven years in. Being with Raw helped me level up. Once I started being in Freak Show, I'm traveling a lot. I I changed my perspective on a lot of things. But I also, a lot of people have noticed, I stopped breaking in 2020. I was completely done with breaking. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to figure out a different career path. I was going to become a nurse. My soul was going to get paid for everything. Yeah, there was one day where uh, the spot to put a door event and Kareem was one of the judges and they asked me to judge and I was like, I'll come judge, like, it's okay. This was in the beginning of 2021, so mind you, I didn't break for the whole year in 2020. I did one jam, which was B-Boy City, and I did it with like Mod Squad and uh, 
bad crew and we won it. But like it didn't feel like a win. I was just like I wasn't training for it, you know. Next year came by at the beginning of the year, I ended up judging with Kareem and at the time I didn't know what I wanted. I just knew I was gonna be coming here. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I feel like I'm just still keep breaking. So I asked Kareem, I was like, maybe this guy can bring me out of where I'm feeling. So I asked Kareem, I was like, hey, I would love for you to teach me, like more like mentor. And it kind of just ended up turning into me getting into rock force. And I think me getting into rock force, that was the push for me to get back into breaking point. But again, I wasn't breaking for a couple of years. Once I get back to breaking, I automatically get into like a world renowned group. So for me, that was a lot of pressure because I was just like, damn, I'm not even as good as I was. Now I have to get back into it and I have to deliver. Can we get a little bit of the backstory about becoming a nurse? Why did you want to quit breaking? I'll give you the whole story. So. In 2019, when I was battling, I went to a jam called FanFest. And this is my first like big one on one that I've done and made it for. And I remember like going to the back and like, I had to rethink of like, what I'm going to do, right? And I look at the bracket and I'm like, hmm, okay, I'm battling Zeku like, next. Let's see who's on the other side, Kareem and Tata. So I was like, hmm, I'm the only guy not sponsored by Monster in this top four. And then I was like thinking, I was like, I'm going to get sponsored by Monster. It was funny because then I had a whole Red Bull show. <laughs> I lost to Zeku. But that opened my mind because a couple months before, I battled with Zeshu and Sota at Massive Monkeys. And that was a stacked battle. Like, they had a tiebreaker. The tiebreaker round was Rock Force versus uh, Middle Beats. And making it that far, I was like, damn, like, I can do things. After that event in FanFest, I messaged him. And I was like, hey, what can I do to be a monster? And he was like, I've seen you before. I'll keep watching you. Like, just keep doing you, right? This is how I got into music. Before I left to Memphis, my dad has diabetes. So my dad had a, they call it an ulcer, diabetic ulcer. Basically means like, you just, your skin doesn't close as, as fast, right? When you have like wounds and stuff. And his wound got infected. It was by his ankle. Took him to urgent care and like, they looked at his foot and like, oh my god, they were so scared. i never seen people that scared of the they, they rushed him to the hospital and yeah, he needed to get surgery on it. And I thought he was going to lose his leg for sure. Through that whole process, he stayed in the hospital for a month. I've always taken care of my parents. Both of them have diabetes, so I always watched through them and like, told them to like, you know, watch their, their sugars and things like that. So it opened up my mind where I was like, oh, you know what, maybe I could be like a healthcare worker. And at the time, like obviously I wanted more to make more money with where I was in life. And every time I was in the room, there was a person to come in. It was either a nurse or a patient transport. And I was like, I asked the guy, like, oh, what do you do, you know? I just went to the office and I was like, hey, how, how can I work here? Like, I want to become uh, a patient transport. Like, okay, fill this out. And then the next day they called me. That was the start of everything. And it was because of my dad going to the hospital and seeing everything he went through. And him being an immigrant, obviously we don't have insurance. So imagine how, how, how big that bill was. At the end of the day, we didn't get anything, which is crazy. So that like, opened my mind a lot to like, oh, I, I like healthcare and like, how they support people and help people out. Within a couple months, I ended up uh, doing dialysis. So I was called the uh, patient care technician. I basically did everything in nurse did. I would stick people every day, like clean up blood, like, I dealt with people, all that stuff. So I was already on my way to becoming a nurse, and with the job that I had, the people were like, oh, you know what? We'll pay for your college as long as you work here two years after. And like for me being an immigrant, I tried to do college and it was so hard because you have to pay out of pocket and we get charged extra, right? We're not, we don't get charged like a regular citizen. So it was really hard for me to go to college and to get that opportunity to get it all paid for was a blessing. I was like, I'm gonna just do this. I guess meeting Kareem and I just changed my whole mind. I was like, you know what? I know I love dancing. Like I know this is my passion. So you were at this crossroads between dancing and nursing. Is nursing off the table at this point? No. I can just get certified again with a uh, patient care technician. That job title, that career path, I know I can take later on. I'm happy that I was able to do that, but now I'm happy that I can put all my eggs in one basket and if it doesn't work out, I could go that way. But my mentality is, I'm not thinking like that because I want all my eggs to, to hatch, you know? I want everything to happen. So you kind of got to just believe in yourself so much. But yeah, it's always good to have a backup plan. Kareem helped me learn how to do too because he's also a physical therapist. So he's not really just a dancer, you know? He's also a dad and he's a physical therapist. So that guy shows me that you can
can balance everything. Another big reason, the, the biggest reason for me to stop breaking was because I couldn't travel out of the country. So I have DACA, which is like a work employment thing, and I have to renew it every two years. It doesn't allow me to leave the country. I can buy a house here. I can do everything a citizen can do before I leave the country. I went to like at least four of those, and every one of them told me I'm not going to leave unless I get married. So why am I even breaking that? I'm never going to be able to leave the country. I'm never going to be able to come international and win all these events. And that was my dream from the beginning. But the thing that helped me leave the country was getting sponsored by Boxy. So that's another reason why I give away a lot of, just a lot of respect because he actually changed my life too. Like if it wasn't for getting sponsored by Boxy, I would have never been able to leave the country. It just was a blessing. And again, it's like the people you surround yourself with. I chose to surround myself around Kareem and Emily. Obviously, there's such good people, they're not just good breakers, they're such genuinely good people, and I think that's one thing to look at. I'm already in pain, I don't know how to watch it. Breaking the hearts in New Mexico, this is the biggest gem in New Mexico. Denver would grow really deep into this. It's me, um, Chops, and Raw. I feel like at this time, this is when I was really trying to break out of my shell and believe I could do things. I really wanted to break. Dope to see because it makes me reminisce on like around this time. Actually, when I got back from this event, Chops was like my right hand man at the time because we grew up together. We went, to, we went to high school together. I remember we both had a serious talk about like we're gonna really do this. Like we're gonna break. And this was like yeah, this was two years after high school. So we were like deciding what we should really do. And I think after getting into future, we were like you know what? I think we're gonna become pro breakers. Your training. Can you talk a little bit about that? You resonate more with the power side, maybe especially early on, right? The mills, the flares. Um, Colorado's history, when I first started coming in, there was a lot of power. But I always liked the big moves. So not just power, but like throwing yourself. Rod taught me how to kind of combine everything in a way and make it really explosive. At this point though, I was just thinking of explosiveness. I was not thinking of footwork, I was not thinking of flow, I was just thinking of big moves and like power moves. Yeah, I was definitely somewhat dancing. That was good. I was so nervous here too because I think the Miami scene ever saw me, so they didn't really make too much noise. And I was, I thought like I was going pretty crazy. <laughs> this is prelim too, and I feel like I was just like, you know what? Not really. Uh, yeah. uh, Dope. But for me, I always have the most fun just meeting up with my crew. 
really well. I feel like Slot Force is just stupid. Like, yeah. just so dumb. And then, like, people come look at us and be like, oh shit, like, these guys are really dope. But they don't really see how we act. Like, we're, we're just dumb, you know, we're, we're funny. And, like, I think that, I love that because yeah. it brings yeah. moments like this. Yeah. I think what you're describing is something I've observed too. I think that all your training, all your preparation to do well at the competition, all of that happens up until the day off. And then by the day off, as much as you can just relax and like you said, maybe you goof off. That's probably the best mentality, actually. Oh my god, it is because the day of your event, you're gonna have yourself. That's why it's so important to surround yourself around other people because the day of the event, you don't want that negativity. You, you promise to train your ass off of this. It's like, the only way you're gonna show that is by being comfortable and being happy. That's really the biggest battle can you remain calm? Can you remain with the same mentality? Because when you're training, I feel like you're so calm and you're not worried about if you mess up or all this stuff, right? So you do better. And when it comes to events, you have all these eyes on you and you, you start to think like, oh, am I good enough to even be here? And it's like, those types of thoughts is what ruins your chances of actually creating a movie. See, I wasn't dancing like that, for sure, those are the videos. I definitely didn't have none of these moves either. Yeah. It's crazy because I grew up watching these guys, and I didn't feel nervous at this battle. This battle, I was just like, I know we can win. I kept telling that to Isaac, like, we're gonna win, bro. Like, I know we can win. Like, we weren't even paying attention to what they were doing. We were just like vibing off each other. Like, it's just dance, it's just have fun. We were just talking about this actually. There's, not, there's probably only three real crews that have ever won three stuff session. Like, real crews. Every other crew has been a super crew. But it's like, there's not a lot of real crews left. But when people battle Rock Force, like, they're not just gonna have to be us. Like, like our moves, you're gonna have to be the chemistry we have, and that's like really hard to try to be, you know what I mean? So, I think, yeah, that's something that I love about Rock Force. Our chemistry is so tight, yeah. Okay, the last clip we're gonna watch is Breaking for Gold LA. I feel like I started even dancing more now. This is the first time I saw you in person. Okay. Like I said before, I've seen your footage, I was a fan already, but seeing you in person, and in contrast to what you were seeing before, you were fast. You were breaking really <laughs> fast. It's not just speed though. Beginners, they try to break fast too, and it's chaotic. Arms are all over the place, they don't know where they are, but in this one, there's a level of control, while also being free with the music. But now I'm still slowing down even more, which is really good because I think that's a key is learning how to use your speeds, right? Because you can speed up really fast, and you can also slow down when you need to take a breather. Also, if you feel like you're not, you don't know what you're gonna do, like slowing down helps all the time, you know? I have ADHD, so I've always been just fast. Like when I was a kid, there's a, a, a video my mom showed me, really like very quiet, like, and I would be singing and I, I just couldn't stop moving. I would always move and just look around and like, so I feel like my speed comes from that. Like it's not because I wanna be fast, I think it's just, I am, you know? Restless. Yeah, yeah restless. Like, I just, I just move all the time. And, like, even when you talk to me, people probably think I'm, like, I don't know. Maybe they don't think I'm nice or something. But I'm, like, I talk so much. And I'm, like, I talk fast. And, like, that's just who I am, I feel like. There's definitely now more control. And I, I think we're not close to that. Because they all, like, I mean, they get on me. They're, like, you know, that's what I'm going to And I think speed is also clear indication of something you master, you know? Like if you master something, you can go fast. But I think like nowadays, like you 
you said, a lot of beginners are trying to fast. And sometimes that can make you look like a beginner. But you also gotta know how to like control it. And I feel like here, I've, I started playing a lot more with speed. Like obviously when I stopped working, I was slower. And when I got down with full work and power, I was faster, right? Um, but I think that is huge, and I, I really hope people can see that because I think that separates a lot of the professionals right now with the, all the beginners. Is the speed changes? There's a way to do a speed change, right? You can't just like decide to go fast and then go slow. Like it's gotta go with the music too, right? So there's a lot of studying people should do with that, but I think speed changing is a big clear indication for me when I judge or like see people. I can tell they're not beginners, but they're like really good at what they do because they change their, their pace. They know when to go fast, they know when to slow down. And I think, yeah, that's like a huge key of like showing who's professional and who's like beginner. Can you maybe give some advice as to how we can think about that in our training? Like, how do we approach that? What helped me so much, and I learned this from Ives and Jones, was when we were trained, people would wake up and train and they're like, all right, let's play DJ Flay. Not, no, no offense to them, because I still listen to all their shit every day. But like, let's play a break beat or something, you know? And they automatically start breaking to break beats. What changed my view on speed and when you use it, we started training to like soul music. We started training to like house music. We started training to pop music. Like, yeah, I was just like, we'd wake up in the morning and just turn on some poppy music and I'm like, alright, like, that was me back then, right? And now I'm like, oh shit, like now I hear some poppy music at the gym or something and I'm just like, yeah, I can get down to it with breaking. Different music, that's what changes a lot of your speed because you can listen to like rap music and it can be really slow. And if you're training, like, you obviously don't need to go fast. Music is slow, and I think with slowness comes a lot of new move movements that you can learn. So much inspiration, so much knowledge you can get just from the slow. And I think a lot of people don't look at music that way. I like that we're having this conversation about music, but I think it's two separate things too. You're talking about just giving yourself a chance to break slow. Music aside, you gotta slow down. After, yeah. I trained with Phil Wizard for like about four months when I lived in Vancouver. And when we started practicing, like, I would always practice, like, you know, starting really fast. And with Phil, like, he would gradually build up, like, he would go slow. He would just move around. I started doing that, and then I started coming up with different concepts. I have to try that. Everyone has to try that once. And then they're gonna get hooked on it, because they're gonna be like, oh, you don't have to go slow. You don't have to, like, off the bat start throwing air flares. Now that we've seen the progression of your dances, are there any other thoughts that you have on the more technical side? We've talked a lot about the filling in the gaps with the dancing, and interpreting the music, speed changes, any other observations? Because we got to see a whole decade. Just dancing, I think, if anything, that's what really changed a lot for me, is dancing. I grew up joining an all-style crew, and that opened my eyes to a lot of different styles, but I really truly believe that you can bring so much inspiration to your style by getting knowledge from different styles, not just breaking. I see a lot of breakers bringing contemporary into breaking, right? And a lot of breaking is contemporary, like the way that people experiment and stuff, right? That's a, that's a whole other style that was brought into breaking and like mashed up now. And now everyone's like, oh shit, this is dope, I want to do that. But they don't really see where it's coming from. Power moves are hard for sure. Footwork is hard for sure, but there's steps. You can learn those, right? If you put a lot of time into it, you can definitely learn those. You can't learn how to dance. That's so hard. Like, you can't just go and teach a kid how to dance, you know what I mean? You can teach a kid six steps. You can teach a kid air flare, obviously. You know, you can see all these kids doing crazy ass power moves, but you can't teach them how to have style. I can notice people who are branching out and like add those styles into breaking, right? So I think, for me, that's a key thing that I have been seeing in my life lately, and I think, with my crew, that's what makes us so dangerous, is all of us can dance, not just one person. There's so much discipline behind learning the mechanics, like you said, of the power and the footwork and the freezes. There's so much focus there that you feel like you don't even have time to dedicate to the, to the dancing part, but we can maybe speed up the progress or, like you're saying, open up our minds if we go yeah, and the I, other side. Yeah, and I think for me personally, I'd love to get the hard stuff done first, and then go easier. I'm not saying other styles are easier. That's actually harder for them. But for me, I was fortunate enough to learn, like, you know, my power moves, my footwork, all that stuff. And then I can branch off to like other styles. Because then you can kind of add everything. I will say this. Get all your vocabulary first. 
once you get all that and you can do everything, then I will start branching out. The question I have before we start making an outro here, I want to talk a little bit about sponsorships. Do you feel like there are breaking sponsored millionaires right now? I'm hoping it be in the future. I feel like right now we're in a place where the Olympics is happening. And obviously a lot of people are getting a lot of opportunities that are in that pathway. But it could go either way. It could either blow up really big after the Olympics, or it could just stay the same and then it could either die down or just stay the same, you know? So I think we're in a transitional phase with breaking right now. I truly believe there will be a millionaire. I think personally there already is. I don't think there's a millionaire b-boy just off of sponsorship. It's a perspective. I think a lot of people look at sponsorships and they're like, oh shit, this guy's making so much money and it's like, it's not like that all the time, right? You have to not only be, be a b-boy, but you also have to be a businessman at the end of the day to get these types of deals and like to get what you're really worth, right? Because a lot of dancers just see a big logo or like a brand and they're like, I want it, I want it. And it's like, you don't know what that brand can do for you. It will offer you, but if you don't come correct with the mindset of like, you want them to help you too, it's like, it never works like that. You're just gonna get free clothes. Just the compliment of like Nike saying, hey, do you want to be sponsored? Of course I want to, but we might not necessarily see our own work. Exactly, and I think we get branded by the great companies. It's easy to say yes. Obviously being around really, really smart business individuals like Moy, um, yeah, these guys have taught me like, even Jeremy too, Jeremy, oh my God. Jeremy, I give up to Jeremy, because that guy is like the backbone of Breaking too. And this guy is, he's killing it. Like, He's one guy that I can trust. If I ever want to get a sponsor, I'm like, yo, how can, what can I do? You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I just think being around those people, like, it's showed me, like, you, if you're on a top level b-boy, you're gonna get brands coming to you, and you gotta know your worth. You gotta know how to talk to them because if you don't, you're gonna end up just getting shirts. Those are things people don't think about. They just think about winning battles and like going to events. Nazi, we're gonna wrap it up here. I want to thank you so much for your time. I know you got a whole list of battles it's coming up this yeah. next year. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Take care, brother. And Thank you, brother. I guess we'll catch you at the next one. Did you have any other last thoughts? I'm a huge fan of this, and I'm hyped to see who you get next on here because, again, I feel like what you're doing with this is so big because you're bringing our stories to life so many people can see. And I feel like people will see the side of breakers unless they have a certain connection with them. You're gonna bring new fans, you're giving to the scene. I'm genuinely hyped to see where you can take this. Thank you, bro. I really appreciate that. I'll keep it going. Thank you again, Valzi. Thank you, bro. And we're out of here. Peace. Peace.